and uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity for, for to, to come in at this stage. Um, I, I want to speak uh, strongly in support of the, the um, Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission, the Gender Pay Information Bill uh, before us. Um, and I was struck, of course, a few weeks ago, Ken, uh, uh, at the, uh, the charity Dress for Success Dublin. It launched its um, hashtag Work Equal campaign and said that, of course, on the 13th of November, the women, the women of Ireland were effectively working for free uh, for, for the remainder of 2018. And while our own uh, gender pay gap of almost 14% is lower than the European average of almost 17%, uh, it's still far too high. Uh, across the Europe, of course, the gender pay gap ranges from just 5.2% in Romania up to 25% in Estonia. And we have an annual, of course, European Equal Pay Day each year uh, now since 2011. Uh, the bill before us, of course, was brought forward by our colleague uh, Senator Ivana Bacic and her Labour colleagues, and I believe uh, it is superior uh, to the Minister's uh, the Gender Pay uh, Gap Information Bill, which is undergoing pre-legislative scrutiny in the Justice Committee currently. The heads of the Government Bill, of course, were published on GenderEquality.e at the start of June, and uh, the Minister said during your speech, I think, in the Shannad, uh, and I quote, that the trust and philosophy be be behind both bills are exactly the same. Uh, the Government bills, uh, Government's Bill, however, it would amend the uh, Employment Equality Act's uh, 1998 to 2015, uh, but it would only apply to companies, as I understand anyway, with no fewer than 250 employees. Uh, and in, in the Shannon debate, of course, Senator Bacic, uh, you know, she agreed that her, her fundamental objective in bringing forward the bill was, and I quote, we all wish to see, uh, you know, full pay transparency legislation. Um, and I understand she met you and uh, the, your officials to see how you could work together uh, to progress the most legally sound bill. Uh, I know that the Senator also said that given the gender pay gap uh, had only narrowed by four percentage points in the past 11 years, that at this rate of progress it will take us uh, 170 years, in fact, to, to close it completely. And as the National Women's Council has said, of course, we just can't wait. Um, uh, I believe Senator Bacic's bill is superior uh, to the, the current government bill because it provides for the publishing of information on gender pay gaps in companies with no fewer than 50 employees. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know in, in, in uh, Iceland, I think it's 25, so it's even smaller companies. So I, I want to agree with the National Women's Council again that this should be reduced, and, and um, uh, at the least it would cover far more companies than provided for in the original um, government bill. Um, the, uh, uh, the subsection, of course, uh, 4 of 32A sets out the type of information in the bill to be published, including differences in mean hourly rates, median hourly rates, bonuses, etc. And subsection 5 provides for the status of employees to also be included in the breakdown referencing the ages of employees and whether they're full-time or part-time. And this will be particularly interesting, Minister, uh, given the uh, uh, over-representation of women uh, in part-time employment um, and, and in the precariat, in the, the precariat, uh, a huge and growing precariat area of, of working people. Uh, and also, uh, you know, as I said, yeah, given the, uh, on, uh, the increasing use of if and when uh, contracts. Subsection 6, of course, provides for the imposition of a Class A fine on conviction and Subsection 7 provides for the publication of the name of the employer of at least 100 staff who contravenes provision. But again, we're not sure what, what is the difference between here for employers who are between, say, 50 and 99 staff, why, why aren't effectively all eligible employers not liable to be, to be publicly named if they're not complying with the law? Um, uh, Ken, I recently spoke on the excellent gender budgeting report which was produced by our Budgetary Oversight Committee, of which I'm a member, and which uh, was ex uh, you know, worked uh, extensively on by our Parliamentary Budget Office. Indeed, I, Examining gender and equality budgeting has been a big part of our remit uh, this past year in the committee. And we've heard some, we heard from some uh, many distinguished stakeholders, including the Women's Council, members of the Scottish Parliament, uh, who have taken a particular interest in this, um, IREC, the Disability Federation and the Wheelchair Association. And we ho had hoped, of course, that Minister Dunhu, he would have produced a gender budgeting report alongside Budget 2019. 2019. That was a fundamental recommendation that we made to him, uh, and ho hopefully it's something that will happen uh, along, along with Green budgeting as well from now on. Uh, and of course there are the six pilot uh, projects on equality budget, budgeting being undertaken in a number of departments including business, enterprise, innovation, transport, tourism and sport, uh, children and youth affairs, culture, heritage and the Gaelic, education, skills and health. And, and But just over, it's under two million I think that we spent on these uh, government uh, programmes which include um, initiatives like uh, requiring more apprentice, apprentices uh, to be available to young women to take up. Uh, the CSO 
of course produced the piece on historical earnings from 1938 to 2015 which included an earnings by gender uh, and of course between 1942 and 2007 female industrial workers earned less weekly compared to their male colleagues uh, significantly and uh, that significant difference uh, of course in 1942 uh, of 79 equivalent of 79 euros it jumped to 215 euros in 2007 uh, although the percentage gap uh, did uh, did decline but um, uh, early this year of course uh, a marketing survey alternatives released the results of a survey it carried out which showed that in the marketing and advertising sectors men are more likely to receive a, a higher wage and additional non-salary benefits and that, that tends to be the case as I think Deputy Martin was saying about many professions uh, across the public um, and private sectors. Uh, so in 2017, of course, we were reviewed, Minister, by the UN uh, for compliance with the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against uh, Women, uh, CEDA, and IRA reported on the 14% gender pay gap, 38% gender pension gap, and the prevalence of women in lower paid and precarious jobs. In fact, we know from, 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 uh, uh, the, we, from that report and from our own evidence that lone parents are much more likely to live in poverty or at risk of poverty, and yet the government should consistently introduce measures that would continue to harm uh, this cohort of, of, of women. In fact, that was one of the characteristics of the austerity government since 2011, that that most vulnerable cohort of women were damaged most of all, and that we still, don't, still haven't undertaken fundamental reforms, can, uh, such as the situation of, of women returners, uh, women who are out of the workforce for a number of years and don't have access to programmes like community employment. We've done nothing about that year after year after year. Uh, so I think that uh, there's a lot of ground to make up. Uh, this bill, however, is an important step and um, uh, along with, uh, hopefully, uh, with the Minister's uh, initiatives that, uh, you know, we will arrive at a vast improvement uh, in this area. Uh, I, I mentioned there Iceland. In fact, I think uh, the Icelanders, they introduced a, um, a gender equality law in mid-2017 and it's mandatory for uh, companies, SMEs, with over 25 employees uh, to obtain an equal pay certification um, and um, it's seeking to eradicate, it's got a target of 20 22 minister to eradicate uh, gender pay differences um, and we've seen as, as so many reports including in the, in the UK where uh, the out outrageous uh, differences in pay between for example women presenters in the BBC uh, across a whole range of activities so the legislation of the, that Senator Batchik and the Labour Party have introduced um, it's a, another hopefully uh, uh, small but important step towards transparency and it, it echoes the thrust of course of a bill I introduced myself in the last stall which is a high pay and well commissioned bill. So I want to uh, warmly support Senator Batchik's bill and the, and the Labour Party and commend, commend them for the work on it. Thanks, Ken. Thank you.